now or a half mile down on the lift. Follow News 1226 on Twitter to keep informed with the latest happening near you. On your side, this is News 12 at 6 o'clock. Police lights, crime tape, and a man on the run after a city worker is shot and killed. We're told he was just doing his job. Charles Case was the Richmond County Code Enforcement Officer shot and killed today. He was on 13th Avenue in Augusta around 10 this morning to condemn a home. Investigators say that's where the suspect fired shots hitting Case, who later died. This is the man now wanted in Case's death. 65-year-old Smitty Melton, expected to be charged with murder once he's captured. And we're going to show you a look at his truck. It is a black truck, and deputies say it's either a Chevy or a GMC. Tonight, we're learning more about Melton's history and a plea from his family. After the swarm of deputy cars, the collection of evidence, and the home now condemned a plea. Safely bring this to an end and uh, turn yourself in. Murder suspect Smitty Melton is his uncle. He says the 65-year-old is a well-known downtown mechanic born and raised at the property, prompting a code enforcement response. Police say it led to the shooting and killing of Officer Charles Case. And my heart goes out, of course, to the family of the deceased, and um, I just would really like for this to, to end in the fastest way possible. County records show there were unpaid taxes at the property. They also revealed the tax commissioner filed a case against Melton back in December. Code enforcement manages cases of tax delinquency, blighted homes, and unsafe buildings. While Augusta officials have not confirmed today's enforcement was directly connected to the records we found, leaders say there was an ongoing investigation. We're awfully sorry that something like this would happen. Commissioners were notified this morning of the city workers' killing. Dennis Williams tells us although details remain limited, the city will likely review enforcement officer protections. Maybe different methods of, of uh, addressing their duties so to make it a little safer. I just hope that um, whoever did it is caught um, and, and prosecuted. Um, and it's, it's just a sad day um, in, in Augusta. Witnesses reported Officer Case was shot at three times. The coroner saying he died from at least one bullet, all while just doing his job. We want you to safely turn yourself in. We don't want this to be worse than it already is. Augusta Mayor Hardy Davis Jr. released a statement after hearing about Charles Case's death. He says the tragic loss of life due to a senseless act of violence is painful for all of us, and I want the Case family to know we are with them to support them as they grieve the loss of Charles. Well, it has been a waiting game again for many of us, especially here across the Augusta Metro, Aiken as well. We've been dry most of the day, but showers and storms are finally starting to make their way further north towards us. We are tracking a tiny little downpour and storm, actually. There are some strikes of lightning with this. Just on the west side of Augusta, just outside of that Bobby Jones interchange, heading towards Wheeler Road exit on I-20 and barreling towards that Grovetown exit as well. So any plans that maybe be on I-20 in the next 30, 45 minutes, definitely some heavy downpours out there. A little bit further south and to the east, we're tracking a line of storms trying to move inland along the sea breeze front. You can see that's a little bit better coverage of showers and storms trying to head our way here into the metro. So better storm chances looking tonight into tomorrow as well. We'll have that forecast in just a little bit. New tonight, USC says they will only allow 20,000 fans inside williams Bryce Stadium this fall for Gamecock football games at home. It normally holds 80,000 people, so that's a 25% capacity. Mask and social distancing will be required. They say details on buying tickets will be out soon, but if you bought a season ticket and you don't want it anymore, you can get a refund and still be eligible for season tickets next year. Columbia County Schools are now recording the number of COVID cases at each of their schools for both students and staff. This is the list of new cases that came up last week alone. They'll be updating this list every Friday on their website. We've been asking almost every day about new cases at their schools for a couple of weeks now. Brady Trappel spoke with the school superintendent today about their decision to start sharing this information with everyone. With COVID-19, there's a fine line between what's private and what's public. But as school in Columbia County began, we started receiving letter after letter. And the questions came in to confirm cases and ask how many there were. We're trying to respond to those things and at the same time focus on what was most important which was having our children, our faculty and staff in buildings safely able to have school. Dr. Caraway says the number of media
media requests became overwhelming. The first week, they confirmed each case. But then, we tried to confirm a case without names or ages and were declined. So we filed an open records request, trying to find out how many cases the district had. They initially declined, citing privacy concerns. Sometimes what can be shared, what should be shared from our perspective and yours can be different. But after discussion, this week the school system decided to release the number of cases and start recording them publicly on their website. The biggest prompt was media questions. It can help, hopefully, well, some of the rumor that they hear. The school system says they will only record numbers weekly, along with the active positive cases, to give everyone a better picture of what's going on and give parents confidence. What people should most concern themselves with is right now in our community, how many positive people are there? School officials say they aren't trying to hide anything or minimize it. Rather, it's always been about serving the community well. So it's our goal to be cooperative. We all work together. We all serve a community, and our goal should be the same. Dr. Caraway says that in nearly every case of COVID in the school district that she's heard of so far, the person is doing well. She hopes that these numbers give everyone more comfort. Reporting in Columbia County, Brady Trapnell on your side. Facts not fear, and according to their list, here are the number of active cases in Columbia County Schools as of last Friday. 31 total student cases, 21 employee cases, and to put that in perspective, that's less than 1% of the student population, and also less than 1% of their total staff. As for cases at our local hospitals, just 8 new cases at university with 79 people in the hospital, and only 6 new positive, positives between doctors and Charlie Norwood VA. 23 people in the hospital over at Doctors. And some more detailed numbers today from AU Health. More than 57,000 people have now been tested overall. You can see how many tested negative there. More than 7,200 have now tested positive, and that puts the positive rate at a little over 12%. Across the two state, daily rise is staying lower than we're used to seeing in South Carolina. Almost 900 new cases today. 42 more people died. In Georgia, 2,800 new cases today with 61 more people uh, dying and also today 216 more people hospitalized in Georgia from COVID-19. Those widespread infections and hospitalizations are impacting Georgia's health care system. ICU beds are now at 85% capacity statewide. AU Health and University Hospital are among dozens of hospitals diverting ICU patients to other hospitals over the last two weeks. Meanwhile, EMS crews are being tied up for longer periods at hospitals while waiting on rooms for their patients, leaving few available ambulances for emergencies. The IT team's Liz Owens tells us how this deadly domino effect is impacting our local hospitals, our EMS, and above all, patients. EMS transported 91-year-old Doris Dunham to University Hospital on July 15th. She went into cardiac arrest while waiting nearly two hours for a room. Every frame picture. Like that, she was living right here by herself until May. And every piece of furniture. You know, we always expected her to be at the time, you know, sitting at the table. Brings a tidal wave of emptiness over Frances Johnson and her brother John Dunham. We come to see her every day. And so um, I miss that. They knew their 91 year old mother's time was coming soon, but the way she left this earth haunts them. It bothers me a lot. Doris Dunham's blood sugar spiked while at Gibson Health and Rehab on July 14th. Records state she was lethargic and would not respond verbally. The facility called Thompson McDuffie Fire and EMS and called ahead to the hospital to let them know they were on their way. EMS reports show McDuffie County arrived at University Hospital with Mrs. Dunham at 646 in the evening. Records state Dunham was placed on a lower priority than less critical patients. This means she would have to wait, and so would the EMS crew, which brought her to the hospital for a room. In the ambulance business, this period of time, when an EMS crew is waiting with a patient to be admitted into the hospital, is called holding the wall. Thompson McDuffie County EMS held the wall for one hour, 49 minutes with Dunham before she went into cardiac arrest. Yeah, I think it's awful that she lay there, and everybody that walked by, or everybody that was out there on the on the wall saw her die yeah dunham died at 8 46 in the evening we obtained these emails between the university and mcduffie county ems about the circumstances surrounding her death 
The hospital and EMS disagree on exactly where she went into cardiac arrest at the hospital, but the email exchange makes one thing abundantly clear. Both EMS and the hospital are overwhelmed. The deputy chief of emergency services in McDuffie County writes, as I stressed with you previously, our crews need to be back in McDuffie County ASAP. They are not only medical professionals, but firefighters and rescuers needed to answer calls. The I team requested wall time or wait time data and ambulance transport information from the Georgia Department of Public Health. We found McDuffie County's average wall time at University Hospital last July was 14 minutes. July of 2020, 38 minutes. We found the average wall time increase for all ambulance providers at University this July. Data shows EMS services are experiencing longer average wall times at Augusta University Medical Center, too. For county agencies like McDuffie County, which only has four ambulances, longer wall times mean fewer ambulances available to answer calls. The deputy chief continues to write, time spent in the emergency department monitoring patients due to the facility not being able to is time they're not able to answer calls in McDuffie County. Overall, patients arriving via ambulance to area hospitals skyrocketed in July. State data shows a 74% increase in the number of patients coming by EMS to university this July compared to last. At Augusta University, 132% increase. At doctors, 183% increase. A surge of patients coming to hospitals is putting many facilities on diversion throughout the state. The Administrator Director of Emergency and Community Services at University replies in her email back to McDuffie County EMS. Our facility is on total diversion currently. Diversion means a hospital has reached capacity. The I team has been tracking hospital diversion since August 10th. University and AU's ICUs have been on diversion nearly every day since then. Some days, even the ER at university is on diversion. Back in March, Governor Brian Kemp issued stay-at-home orders to give hospitals time to avoid this very thing. University Hospital has this disclaimer listed on Dunham's medical records. COVID-19 infections and transmission risk put heavy strains on healthcare resources. The impact of COVID-19 on all emergency aspects of care, including the impact the patient seeking care for other reasons outside of COVID-19 is unavoidable. John and Francis find comfort with each other now. Maybe somebody else's mother's laying out there in the hall. But wonder how many others could die waiting on care too. University Hospital tells us opening up the Somerville campus has helped with bed capacity. However, those additional patients combined with precaution safety measures has contributed to the delays. They say they're reviewing their procedures now in hopes of improving time. Liz Owens, on your side. So frustrating there, especially for patients who are in their 90s like this one. Yeah, an important investigation. Thanks, Liz. Honoring a beloved local nurse who lost her battle with COVID-19. A balloon released today for Yolanda Kaur right outside AU Medical Center where she had worked for 13 years. Her co-workers there say this makes it all really hit home. And when she became ill with this, um, it really brought everything home that this was no longer just people from other zip codes or people that we don't know. This is us taking care of someone that we love and care for because she worked with us. They say Yolanda was beloved by everyone and will be sorely missed. We are tracking some heavy rain now moving out of the west side of Augusta towards Columbia County. You can see some wet roadways here on I-20 near Wheeler Road. Have a radar update and a look ahead at the weekend coming up. And more students heading back to campus today. It's college students. We're going to check out some safety measures in place at USC Aiken. Justice Department says Kelly left message. We found the masks are on as students head back to class at USC Aiken, and the university is taking other precautions as well. They have thermometers set up and plexiglass in classrooms. Kennedy Harris shows us all the safety measures in place there. USC Aiken students came back to campus for classes today with several safety precautions in place, including this. It's a safety device that checks your temperature and detects if you're wearing a mask or not. But that's not the only thing the university has in place to keep everyone safe. We have a really strong mitigation plan. 
we began um, in March. As soon as we had to shut down, we got in, went to action and started developing a mitigation plan for our students to be able to return safely this fall. The university's Ready, Set, Return plan features daily cleaning, social distancing signage reminders, and a mask requirement. And even in our classroom, if social distancing is possible, we're still requiring face masks to be worn by students in all classrooms and inside buildings. Students say they're happy to see others following the rules. It's a relief and a blessing for us to even be back here on campus. Um, I did not like sitting at home for all those months or years, it feels like, but I'm excited to be back at school, honestly. And if there's a positive case on campus, they say they're ready for that, too. They have a team of 15 trained contact tracers tasked with slowing the spread of the virus. We know that DHEC is overwhelmed with the amount of contract tracing they're having to do, and sometimes the person's out of isolation before they're able to be contacted. So we're contacting people as soon as we know they're positive. The team will identify people exposed to the virus, go through a series of questions, and determine if they need to quarantine. But we feel like we have a good handle on uh, how to help our students navigate through this time well. Kennedy Harris, on your side. The university says there are consequences for any faculty, staff, or students who do not follow the precautions. But as far as the first day of school, they say there have not been any problems. And as universities begin this new semester, schools might be seeing a dip in enrollment because of this pandemic. The South Carolina Commission on Higher Education says some colleges are expecting enrollment to drop by as much as 13% this semester. They're expecting more students to choose to take a gap semester or maybe even a gap year. The commission says about half the universities in South Carolina are doing face-to-face -face instruction to start the school semester. To weather now, and Riley's been tracking some...